Let me take this opportunity to welcome you to our today's session. Uh, we are doing double taxation treaties, which basically we are calling it cross-border issues. And it's basically the agreement uh, between, when you, when you look on the cross-border or the double taxation treaties, they are normally agreements entered between Kenya or two countries to relieve the taxpayers on tax liability charge on the income in two different countries. And uh, the objectives are already here, but we are saying the, the most important areas which we are supposed to be looking at is um, for a taxpayer to enjoy a double taxa taxation relief, there must be an existing double taxation agreement between Kenya and the foreign country from where income was earned. Secondly, the Kenyan tax on foreign income is more than the tax paid in foreign country. Number three, the taxpayer must be a Kenyan resident. A resident, sorry. So some of the objectives, uh, why do we normally uh, need or the countries need to come up in a, with an agreement? Uh, some of the objectives are put in place there, where we are saying, number one, it is an exchange of qualified uh, technical expertise between two countries. You can see that uh, the, uh, we can be able to enjoy the, the, the services of the expertise uh, from different countries. Number two, we are seeing is to increase labor mobility between two countries. Number three, to transfer technology from country to the other, remove, remove of trade barriers, promotion of investments, then we have the savings in foreign exchange. But when you look on the methods of implementing double taxation agreement, normally I have two. I have said the first one is the exemption method, and uh, you normally find that um, it is where the, 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 the original country or the home country, um, the income from the home country is the one that is normally subjected for taxation, but any income generated from foreign countries are not subjected for uh, taxation. And we are saying the method has a limitation of generating lower revenue to the government, and it may lead to evasion since the taxpayer is not required to disclose the income earned in the foreign country. Number two, I have said we have the credit, um, we normally have the, cred uh, uh, the, the credit method, and uh, we are saying that uh, the credit is granted. The credit is granted or tax paid in the foreign country. That is, uh, the tax paid in the foreign country is considered as a tax relief. Then we look on the advantages. Like one, uh, we are saying that it, it, it reduces chances of tax evasion. See, taxpayers are required to disclose their total income, and that is a common method we are going to be using. Um, number another one, you can say it helps in evaluating economic cooperation between the two countries. See, they exchange information about the taxpayers. Then also, we, we are going to be uh, getting more income due to the combination of the income generated between uh, separate countries. Now, some of the conditions, I, I remember I was able to check on them, uh, so I'm not going to be repeating. I was on the side of the procedure of computing double taxation relief, and I said, number one is to determine the total income in Kenya and in the foreign country, and that is what we are going to be doing in our illustrations. Determine the, total, uh, the tax liability of the income. Number three, determine the tax liability of the income earned in Kenya. That is what we are going to be doing. Number four, determine the difference between the total liability and the tax liability on the Kenyan income. That is, the tax, uh, the actual tax payable on the, on the foreign income, this should be compared against the, the actual tax paid in the foreign country, and the lower of the two values is the relief to be granted. The relief is should be granted. So um, in that point, it means... If already you paid, for example, 100,000 in a foreign country like Uganda, and in Kenya you are required to, uh, when once we do the computations, you are required to pay around 150,000, then it means there is a tax relief. Um, in simple terms, you just look on what you are supposed to be paying in a foreign country, what you paid in the foreign country, and what you are supposed to be paying your, in, in, your, in, your, in your total um is the foreign income compared to, um, <clears throat> let me repeat again. When you look on the, for example, the Kenyan tax on the foreign in income is more than the tax that you paid in the foreign country, then um, there is a tax relief. And therefore it is it is as simple as that. You don't need to, to make a lot of uh, contradiction based on the understanding of such. And uh, based on that, I say most favored nation status we say 
It normally arises where the, a country in a particular region is granted a preferential tax treatment by another country. So we are saying that the country that is favored is considered a strategic trade partner. Usually favorable tax re uh, regulation regarding the flow of trade is introduced. And uh, one of the key objectives, we are saying, it, it normally facilitates trade between the two countries. It ensures faster exchange of goods and services. I remember now there is a scheme or there is a scam which is coming in regarding to Kenya and Saudi, where we are being told that they, 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 they negotiated um, the matter of uh, um they negotiated the matter of uh, oil and uh, when you look on it globally the 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 the, the, the aspect of um of of, of um, uh, oil is coming down because um, due to uh, some uh, elements which affected the uh, let me talk about the systematic risk but um what is happening in our country we find um uh, something which is abnormal that the prices of, of the oil keeps on increasing sometimes um we might be and um, as someone who normally teaches derivatives you will be able to find there is a scam which is coming in and the country is on the wrong track because in the in the next period we might be discussing about 20 trillion debt in the future um or more uh because already we are looking on the the level and uh, how the government is borrowing remember that the, the oil which is which was agreeable between kenya and the other states uh which we said we are not going to be trading using uh, uh using us dollar um that is a total lie because already um i saw there is a somewhere where i saw that uh, um uh, the, the the country uh, which facilitates the oil is asking for one four hundred and twenty billion, which are supposed to be paid. But when you look at, uh, we have never been. Uh, when you look on the the uh, motorists, they, they don't uh, get those products or, or on credit basis. Why could be the the companies which are operating the uh, which are operating the the the, the issues of uh, petrol? Or let me talk about the. Uh, the petrol stations, the companies which are operating the petrol stations, they have money because they have already collected them from the, from the consumers. That is different from the information that we are going to be given by the government. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to find that we are being fooled on how the matters are being taken place. And uh, due to that, um, uh, for any side you are supporting politically, uh, look at it in a different aspect where you're going to be used by the current regime, by the current regime. Um, things are going south, and I don't think uh, we will be able to enjoy as much as we should have uh, for more um, income, which we are generating from our income. Uh, due to time, because I can be able, we can be able to discuss on the matters which are affecting our economy. We have a lot of information, but due to the time, let me just focus on uh, the issues of the double taxation treaties, uh, because I say today we just want to cover three, any three of the uh, short uh, short topics. So I just want to finish the double taxation, and then I shift my gears to I can do the taxation of a member club, uh, so that uh, we can also look for circles as we move on the completion of the syllabus. Uh, so that being said and done, uh, just allow me to uh, to do some illustrations here. Um, there is an illustration. There's a few questions uh, regarding to uh, double taxation treaties. Uh, one, um, I'll just be able to do, I think, around two, and then I give you an assignment. And uh, to participate in a class, I said once uh, we once you do um, the assignments and uh, we discuss with you. I know there are some more people when you want to die. But I will, we shall come through. I will be able to respond to you. Um, I will be able to respond to you so that uh, yeah. um, you, you know your status of where you are supposed to be in terms of understanding. Let me look on a question they tested on May 2021. There is a question there. There is a question there. For those that are doing AFM, uh, today was a bad day. Sorry for that. Okay. Um, uh, 
Advanced financial, uh, we are doing a public finance and taxation. That is the name which it was called during those days. But today we are calling it advanced taxation. Very good. So I just want to do a question at 3C from this paper. And then I think we should be taking a paper now and try to do all of it. There is a question of Ali Salama. Someone to read for us, please. Let me start with Iman. Iman, yes. Can you read for us? What about Kevin? Nobody will read for us. Let me I check someone else. I can read. Okay, so I mark it. Go on. Ali Salama is a resident taxpayer in Kenya. During the year of income 2020, he had uh, 4.38 million shillings from employment in Kenya. He had also received 480,000 shillings from the UK, which is double taxation relief treaty with Kenya, which has a double taxation relief in, with Kenya. Tax deducted in UK was equivalent to 80,000 Kenya shillings required. Double taxation relief in Kenya and uh, tax payable in Kenya by Mr. Ali Salama. Thank you so much. You can see it from the notes which uh, we, we, we were going through. Uh, we were discussing about this matter regarding a double taxation uh, reliefs and treaties. I remember there before during our I think it should be a nice president, right? During our time with Zoro Kenyatta, there is a treaty which was signed between Kenya and United Kingdom. And uh, it allowed our nurses to go and work uh, directly without uh, looking for these permits. So we used to have that window. And uh, it, we, we, I, I remember they, they, they enjoyed so much because they could be able to access job opportunities in the United Kingdom. Thereafter, you can see Kasnebo also took an advantage and they set this question um, from, that, uh, uh, from that point of view. So when you look at it, uh, the first thing that we say from the notes, let us first uh, look on the, the tax income, uh, which is supposed to be uh, generated. Uh, we, we say that uh, we are going to be comparing the Kenyan tax on the total income with the Kenyan tax on the Kenyan income. So the difference shall be the Kenyan tax. The difference shall be the Kenyan tax on the foreign income. If the Kenyan tax on the foreign income is higher than the tax paid in the foreign country, a double taxation relief is going to be granted. That is what we have already said. That is what we have said. So um, that being said and done, um, let me just share my board so that we can move very quickly and look on the aspect which... Uh, on the areas which we just need to know in terms of uh, in terms of this kind of uh, question so let us go there i give you a solution i think you can be able to see it so in that case um this question which was brought during that period it is a question which is going to be assisting us understand well we're going to be understanding well this aspect of the double uh, treaty, double taxation treaties. So I think um you can be able to see here double taxation taxation treaties. So I remember I'm doing a question for May 2021, question number three C. 2021 question 3C. And in that regard, let me try to okay. So now let, let's let's move on. Uh, let me just go back to the question. I've been told Ali Salama is the resident taxpayer in Kenya during the year of income 2020. He has 4.38 million from employment in Kenya. He has also received 40,000 shilling, shillings uh, from uh, 
from the United Kingdom, which has a double taxation uh, relief uh, treaty, which had the double taxation relief treaty with Kenya, tax deducted in UK was equivalent to eighty thousand shillings. So in this case, allow me to have. Um, let me first calculate the total taxable income. So let me take uh, my Kenya shillings here. Let me put them there. So the first thing that I'm supposed to be doing, let me take the Kenyan income. What is our Kenyan income? I remember he, he, he was paid um, 4.38, 48,000. That is the Kenyan income. Then we are going to be adding foreign income. How much is our foreign income? Um, we have been told that um, he was able to receive a foreign income of 480,000. What is the total income of this guy? Right, that is what I was uh, saying. Let us calculate the total taxable income. Total taxable income. And I think it should be around 48,000, 60,000. 48, 60, that is the total taxable income of Ali Salama. Now, after you get that, just come up with a two columns. One, I just want to, to get the, the Kenyan income on one side. Um, I just want to calculate the, uh, the tax on the Kenyan income on one side and also for the total income. And for the total income. Let me start by looking on the graduated scale rates. I don't know whether it is going to be applicable in your exams, but the one that we know, the, the graduate scale, uh, scale rate that we are using before the commencement of the current uh, finance bill is that uh, we used to have the first 2,000 and We used to tax at the rate of 10%. So in this case, you put here 28,800, and also you put the same on the total, 28,800. The second bands, the second bands, I remember when you look on that paper up there, on 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 the side there is a side where they are giving you um they are giving you the annual tax pay up there on the chart so there is a difference between the, the first range is one to two eight eight thousand the rate is ten percent the second one is two eight 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 thousand and one uh, to four forty eight thousand uh, four eight eight thousand so once you take four eight eight thousand minus because we are doing on the maximum point four eight eight thousand minus two eight eight thousand you get 200,000. The rate provided in that case is 15%. Is 15%. So 15% 15 of 200,000, we should be getting 30,000. You put there 30,000 together with that side of the total income. The next band, and I can be able to see it, the third band which we are seeing there, we are being given 688,000 minus 488,000. Still getting 200,000 difference. The tax rate provided is uh, 20%. So 20% of these we are supposed to be getting 40,000. And also here should be 40,000 there. 40,000, 40,000 on the other end. Now, in this case, I just want to look on the excess because already you have been told excess over 68,000. We are going to be taxing at the rate of 25. And um, I'll start by look, computing for Kenyan income. I will start with the Kenyan income, and then later on, I will come for the total income. So I will say, let me start with the excess of 438,000 minus 688,000. We multiply by 30%. How much to this? Right? I think we are in a position for, uh, to understand. So the 438 is for the Kenyan income. We just want to know how much. How much are we supposed to be picking there? So 438,000 minus 688,000 times 0 0.3, we are getting 1107. 110,600, right? But here we don't put anything because the 7380 is a Kenyan income. Then when we go to the side of the total income, we are going to be using 4880, 4860, sorry, 4860,000. Minus 688,000 times 30%. How much is this? How much is this? Is it 30? No, it should be 25. The rate is 25. And uh, 
Godfrey cannot be able to correct that. The rate is 25% as per the tax months. So 43.8, let me just repeat that. Uh, minus 688,000 times 0 0.25. We are getting 923,000. That is what I'm going to be putting here. 923,000. The other one will be 4860,000 minus 688,000 times 0 0.25. We are getting 1043,000 for the total income. 1043,000. Correct. That is what already we are getting there. So I just want to get the totals, which are normally called gross tax. Let me get my gross tax here. And also for the total income. So for the Kenyan income, it will be 28,800 plus 70,000 plus 923,000. I can see I'm getting 1021,800. What about for the total? It will be 98. I think it should be 98,800 plus 1043,000. Getting 11 for 2800. 11 for 2800. Once you, once you get that, let us now, because already you know, this figure is already inclusive here. And you just want to determine the Kenyan tax on the foreign income. So, what I'm supposed to be doing is we less Kenyan tax. We less Kenyan tax. We less Kenyan tax on. Kenyan income. We let this Kenyan tax on Kenyan income. How much will it be? So we just take a deduction of 10, 21, 800. Right? And then what you are going to be getting is Kenyan tax on foreign income. Kenyan tax on foreign income. So how much is this? 11 for 1, 800 minus 10 to 1, 800. We are getting 120,000. 120,000. And we say it, when you do your calculations and you, you find the Kenyan tax is more than the tax which was paid in the, in the foreign income, there is a tax relief. So what are we, are, there is a double taxation relief. So let us look on the tax paid in UK. The tax paid in UK, uh, he paid 80,000. So when there is, when the figure which was paid is lower, then the Kenyan tax on the foreign income, there is a double taxation relief, right? So let me say this for, uh, for better understanding. There is a double taxation relief. There is a double taxation relief. There is a double taxation relief of Kenya shillings, 80,000. There is a double taxation relief of 80,000 because, because Kenyan tax, because Kenyan tax on foreign income, Kenyan tax on the foreign income is more than the tax, is more than the tax is more than the tax paid is more than the tax paid in uk than the tax paid in foreign country i think you are able now to understand so when you are going to be calculating the tax payable let us look on the computation of the tax payable mm, excuse me yes yes so the the relief is the amount that of tax that was paid in the UK. Yes. That is why when I was going through the notes, I told you, once you calculate and you get the amount, uh, the Kenyan tax on the foreign income is more than the amount which was paid, right? When Once you do the comparison, you find what you have calculated is more than what was paid. That is a tax, uh, double taxation relief. And you are normally given the relief of the whole amount. The amount which you paid in the foreign country. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. 
So to calculate your tax payable, right? Let me let, take the Kenyan, uh, the Kenyan. It should be the Kenya income. It should be the Kenya income. Um, uh, let me put it in this way. Kenyan tax on total income. The Kenyan tax on the total income. Now we are going to be taking 11 for 1. 11 for 1, 800, right? Then that is the total income, which is subjective for taxation. So what are we supposed to be picking in here? We are going to be uh, deducting with less double taxation relief. Double taxation relief of 80,000. Right? That is a double taxation relief. Then also, there is a personal relief. What is our personal relief? How much is it? Currently, it's 28,800 per year. What is the tax payable? What is the tax payable? What is the tax payable? I just need to take 1141, 800 minus 108,800. I'm getting around 1033,000. 1033. 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, for a better understanding. What are you doing all these? I have six months. I have six months. So let me do another question. There is a question tested on um, November 2016. November The November 2016 here question. So let us do it very quickly. It should be a question 4B. Come on to read. Come on, read, please. Mr. Silvanas Gilani, Gilani was a resident of Kenya in, in the year of income 2015. During part of the year, he was in United State, United Kingdom, UK, and earned income amounting to UK. Forty-three thousand five hundred uh, tax paid in UK income amounted to eight thousand seven hundred. Eight thousand seven hundred. His employment income from Kenya was Kenya shillings nine hundred fifty thousand. The inductant. 184,800. Further, he had pro provided consultancy services at a fee of Kenya shillings 190,000 net withholding tax. Other income comprising of the following, comprised of the following. Rental income of Kenya shillings 400 after deducting Cost of furniture, 36,000. 
estate agent fee before lending for the 8,000 and caretakers range 8,000 per month. Patent rights were where he received net loyalty income of 95,000. Expenses relating to patent rights were registration of patent rights, 8,900, and operating expenses, financial sharings, 18,000. Assume the applicable exchange rate was Kenya shillings one Kenya shillings sorry Kenya shillings one hundred to one Euro uh, Kenya has signed a double taxation agreement with UK required. Double taxation relief, if any, due to Mr. Silvana Zirani for the year of income 2015 to tax payable or refundable by Mr. Zirani for the year of income 2015. Thank you so Samarize much. You can uh, see we are dealing with some dollars there, uh, which is a strong currency. Uh, basically, the, when we are trading, but it's not in the world. Um, so the double tax is relief, if any, due to Mr. Silvanas Girani for the year of income 2015. But already when you look on the question, uh, uh, the setup of the question different from uh, what we have done. So in this case, the first thing that I just want to determine is the Kenyan income. That is the first thing. Because... I've been told that during the part of the year, it was in the United Kingdom and the earned income of UK for three five hundred uh, dollar. I think they are supposed to be dollars. Yes, taxes paid on the UK income amounted to eighty seven hundred. His employment income from Kenya was nine hundred and fifty thousand. The year deducted was one eighty four eight hundred uh, eight hundred shillings. Further, he, he had provided consultant services at a fee of one ninety thousand, which is the net of withholding tax. A net of withholding tax. So how much is the the withholding tax? Um, how much is the withholding for consultancy firms? How much? How much? So we normally withhold at the rate of five percent of the gross. We know that, and it it comes to consultancy firms. Now, <clears throat> let me first do the Kenyan income, right? And uh, when I look at it, let me just put my Kenyan shilling there. You are going to be uh, taking the employment, employment income. The employment income, no, uh, it takes what? Uh, when I look on the question, I can see the employment income taking around 950,000. 900, uh, 950. Plus 184, 184, 800. 150,000 uh, plus 184,800 because already 184,800 was a pay which was deducted from the uh, from the uh, gross uh, from the employment income. 184,800. We are getting around 11,400. Eleven thirty four, eight hundred. That is what you're supposed to be getting. When you look on the other income, there is a consultancy fee. There is a consultancy fee. So how much was the consultant? The gross. You are supposed to be looking at the gross, but what we are given is a net. So the, that figure is equivalent to ninety five percent. You ask yourself what about a hundred percent? You you return it to gross. So in this case, it will be one. Sorry? Because already when we have been given as a net, it means they have already withheld the 5%. So the 190 is equated to 95%. What about 100? So that we can return the amount that they have withheld. So 190,000 times 100, we divide by 95, getting around 200,000. Getting two hundred thousand there, 
From there, I can see there is a rental income uh, based on the note number not number one, we are being told the rental income of 400,000 after deducting cost of furniture, estate agents fee before let's see 40,000 in caretakers uh, wages of 800, uh, 8,000 per month. When I look on that rental income, is less than the threshold given by the, uh, the rental income tax act. So in this case, we know the threshold uh, for uh, to tax any income. And when you look on our income is silent. We don't know whether it is a commercial or is a residential. So let me just treat it and do my assumption and I say it is a residential. When I, I say it is a residential, it means uh, the residential uh, houses are normally taxed when uh, the gross amount um, is equivalent to 15 million um, uh, or above. That is what we really know about um, the rental income. The other thing is the royalties. Do we have royalties there? I can see, yes, we have some royalties. How much was the royalties? How much was the royalties? We are being told that should be in note number two. The patent rights uh, were where he received a net royalty income of 95,000. So it will be under the royalties, we are going to be taking the net royalties. How much? The net royalties, I can see we have been told is 95,000 shillings. So we are, the, the statement continues, it says, expenses relating to patent rights were registration of a patent of 89 and operating expenses of 18,000. What we know that um, it is a disallowable in, uh, expense there, it is that um, add the we are being told about um, expense relating. We are talking about registration of patents. Registration of patents of around um, how much was it? Eight nine hundred. <clears throat> the other operating expense is an allowable expense, and therefore uh, we are not going to be adding it back. So we are going to be taking 95,000 plus 8,900. I'm getting one of 3,900. Uh, one of 3,900. One of 3,900. So let me just get the total Kenyan income. Get the total Kenyan income. How much is the total Kenyan income? It will be plus 200,000. Plus eleven thirty four eight hundred. You can see we are getting fourteen thirty eight eighteen thirty eight seven hundred eighteen thirty eight seven hundred. Right? That is a thirteen. Uh, yes, it should be like that. Then we are supposed to be adding. Sorry, let me add. We add what? Let me add the foreign income. How much was the foreign income earned by our guy here? We have been told that um, he earned some amount from the UK, amounted to 43,500, and we have been told one dollar is equivalent to, I think it is 100 as per the last statement. What about uh, 43,500? Uh, 43, so I just need to take 43,500 times, times 100, getting around um, 43,500. 43,000, 43, 50,000, right? <clears throat> what is the total taxable income now? Total taxable income. Total taxable income will be how much? So I just need to add here, 43,500, getting 57, 57, 88, 700, 57, 88, 700. So in that case, in that case, let me take um start computing the, the Kenyan tax. So I start with the Kenyan income. Then we have the total income. Right. So let us look on the graduate scale rate. We say we start with the first 288,000. The rate was 10%. 
10% of this we got 28, 800. Also here we have 28, 800, right? The second, we took uh, four, it, it was 488 minus 288. You get 200,000 times it was 15%. So 15%, it was around 30,000. Then also here is 30,000. The excuse. third one, sorry. Hello, excuse, sorry. Uh, on this 10% this and 15%, do we use the brackets given at the top of the question or because I, I think we have been given different figures? Yeah, remember now, these are the currents. And even you can you can find in your current exam having a different uh, graduate experience. Just always so, look at it there, then you compute. We're just using what we have right now. Oh, because I can see from the top of the uh, question, the, yes, it's not it two, it's not two hundred and eighty-eight thousand. I'm just doing with this one because it's what you might be coming up with in an exam. Mm -hmm. So two hundred thousand again times twenty percent, twenty percent. I remember we got forty thousand here. And also, you put there forty thousand. Now, <clears throat> excess we say. My excess, I will, I will leave with the Kenyan income. So the first one will be 14, 38, 700, minus 688,000, right? This one we multiply by 25%. Multiply by 25%. So in this case, it will be 14, 38, 700, minus 688,000, times 0 0.25, getting 187, 187, 675. Correct. The next one will be the total income, which we are getting 5788. 5788, 700 minus 688,000. Then we multiply by 25%. So this one will be 5788, 700 minus 688,000 times 0 0.25. Um, am I getting the wrong figure? Yes. Uh, let me just look at this. Times zero point two five, we are getting twelve seventy five. Twelve seventy five one seventy five. So, <clears throat> how much are we getting there? Uh, what are we supposed to be getting there? I talked about. Let us get our gross tax. What is our gross tax? Let me start with the Kenyan income: twenty eight eight hundred plus thirty thousand. Uh, plus 40,000, plus 187, 675, getting 286, 286, 475. The other one would be 28,800, plus 70,000, plus 1275, 175, getting 1373, 1373. 975. Then we say, let us deduct, right? We say, let us deduct the Kenyan tax on the Kenyan income. Kenyan tax on Kenyan income. So we are deducting here 286, 475. We are deducting 286, 475. So that you can be able to get to get Kenyan tax. On foreign income. So the Kenyan tax on the foreign income is how much? The Kenyan in income or the Kenyan tax on foreign income, it will be 1373, 975 minus 286, 475, get it 1087, 500. 187,500, right? But uh, how much do this guy pay? Right? Let us look on the tax paid in UK. How much did the guy pay? The Kenyan tax on the UK, he paid 8,700, 
So you just need to take it a 700 times 100, which is the uh, the exchange rate by that time, getting 870,000. So, ukipata tu namna I say take the lower, give the, when you are calculating the tax payable, give the double taxation relief. Now, in this case, um, let me first take, um, let me take the Kenyan tax on total income. Kenyan tax on total income, we are taking 1373, 1373, 975. Then we less double taxation relief. Double taxation relief. Our double taxation relief is how much? 870,000. Correct. 870,000. There is also, we are, we are going to be looking on our pay. How much was pay? So it was around uh, 184 800. There is a personal relief. The personal relief, I remember it was, it is 28 and 800 currently. Do you have anything else to deduct there? There is a withholding tax. There, was, there is a withholding tax relief. One for consultancy, and the consultancy will be five percent. Will be five percent of the gross amount. The five percent of two hundred thousand. Then the other one will be royalties, which is also five percent of our royalties amounts to how much? One or three nine hundred. One or three nine hundred. So the first one will be royalties should be the gross amount. So it will be one or three nine hundred plus the expense. The operating expense in your require eighteen thousand will be around one twenty one nine hundred. I, I think you are not getting confused there. The gross amount for uh, for royalties it should be the amount which uh, was received before deducting any operating expense. So they receive 121,900. So 5% of that is how much? It is 1695. 1695. Then we have this 10,000 for consultancy. So get your uh, tax payable. How much is your tax payable? How much is your tax payable? How much is your tax payable? So in that case, it means I need to take that 373, 975, minus 870,000, minus 184,800, minus 28,800, minus 10,000, minus 1695 getting around 274,000 you can see so he was able to pay just 274,280 274,280 274,280 I have a question yes could you explain why you've gotten that figure for royalties the 121900 again when you look on the additional information number 2 Additional information two, the pattern rates where where he received a net royalty income of ninety five thousand, right? Once he received ninety five thousand, there was a disallowable uh, figure of uh, there was a disallowable amount for registration of patent of eighty nine hundred. Then there was an operating expense which is an allowable expense of eighteen thousand. How much is it? Yes, it should be one twenty one nine hundred. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Because the, it, it should be when you are giving a relief, it should be the proportion, the percentage given by 
by the Income Tax Act with a gross amount without before deducting anything. So that is why we are taking the whole figure. Because they normally withheld. The person who is paying you normally withhelds, even if it's a tax agent. So he normally withheld before even deducting any expense regarding to the job which you are doing. So what is the gross amount? The gross amount for those royalties were 121,900. 121,900. I think now you are able to understand where it is coming from. The assignments, um, allow me to give assignment here, August 2022, question 3A. August 2022, question number 3A. August 2022, question number 3A. August 2022, question is 3A. I think we have to get up to that point. So allow me to do taxation of member clubs. 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 One minute. So let us continue. Let me just write those ones here uh, for taxation of member clubs before I come to circles. And I should say, I should say there, a member club, a member club, a member club refers to an association of persons. Refer to association of persons. They refer to the association of persons who come together, who normally come together with, they normally come together with common objectives. They normally have common objectives, e.g., a sports club. Right, we are saying the income of a member club, the income of a member club, the income of a member club is basically subjected to tax, is uh, basically subjected, is normally subjected to tax. No one subjected to tax is the corporation rate at a corporation at a corporation rate of 30%. It's a corporation rate of 30%. However, however, if the member's contribution If the member's contribution, if the member's contribution is more than 75%, is more than 75% of the total income, more than 75% of the total income, such contribution for members. Such contribution for members, contribution from members will be, such contribution for members will be exempted from tax. Will be exempted from tax, 
due to be exempted from tax. Hence, the only income, the only income, hence the only income shall be the only taxable income, the only taxable income shall be the income derived, the income derived from, the income derived from third parties. It's going to be the income derived from third parties. It's going to be the income which you're going to be deriving from third parties. That is what we normally talk about taxation. That is what we discuss about the taxation of the taxation of member clubs. And that is why I've said that um, a member club is just an association of members who have uh, common objectives. And the income from members club is basically subjected to tax at a corporation tax rate of 30%, just like any other company. But we are saying that uh, if uh, the member's contribution is more than 75% of the total income, such contribution for members will be exempted from taxation. Then the only taxable income shall be the income derived from third parties. So to understand that point, it is very important to do an illustration. And uh, let us look at an illustration they brought on November 2016, question 2B. Let us look on a question they brought there. November 2016, question 2B. <clears throat> Let's go there. Question to be. Somewhat read, please. Somewhat read. Beatrice. Following information was extracted from the books of Michelle Sporting Members Club for the year ended 31st December 2015. The club's manager did not submit income tax returns as he argued that the club was exempted from taxation. He has consulted you for professional advice. Additional information the club received gross income during the year ended that first December 2015, amounting to 35 million, which was analyzed as follows. We have entrance fees, member subscriptions, interest on late subscriptions, interest on income, fixed deposit, dividend income, royalties, rent income, gain on property transfers. Scroll. Uh -huh. Additional information number two. Operating expenses amounted to 6,360,000. Number three, interest and dividend income was stated gross of tax required. Advise the club's manager on the circumstances under which members' clubs are taxed in your country. Number two, assess whether Michezo Sporting Members' Club is subject to taxation for the year ended 31st December 2015, and the tax and the applicable tax liability is in. Thank you so much, Beatrice. Let's start by answering question number one. Let us answer requirement number one. Uh, we have been told to advise how we are supposed to be taxing. So let us do so. So, requirement number one, we have been told to say. We are supposed to say a member club. We are supposed to say a member club shall be taxed on all its income. Shall be taxed 
on all its income shall be taxed on all its income, both from members, both from members and third parties. Both from members and third parties. And let the members' contribution. Members contribution and let the members contribution and let the members contribution is more than seventy five percent. Is more than seventy five percent of the total income of the total income. Is more than seventy five percent of the total income. Where such income. Such income from members. The such income from members will be tax exempt. Exempt. Now let us go to requirement number two, and you are going to be starting with workings. As for the question, let us look on whether the income in that question. Whether it is subjected for taxation or not. Let us look on that. That is the first thing that we are supposed to be doing. So let us do that first. And it's okay. Okay, now, um, I can see there is an income for members, and that is what we want first to group. Uh, from the side of the incomes generated. When I look at the question, I look on the question there. There is um rental income. That is other incomes. Uh, we are also having uh, the interest on savings accounts. Those are other incomes. But uh, I can see, let me just do that 75%. So in this case, it will be, let me just put here a okay, shilling. Let me first take the interest from members. The interest from members is how much? The interest, um, uh, the interest of members loan. It should be on. Sorry. The interest on members loan. Mm -mm, it should not be like that. Okay. Which question are we doing? Mm -hmm. Might be reading the wrong question. So it should be we just go back. We do November 2016. Question. It should be this question. We are here to go to circles. That's why I'm getting confused. Um okay. Um, who was reading? Uh, Beatrice, have you read the question regarding to Michezo Sports in Member Club? Yes, that is the question that I've read. Oh, thank you. So when you look on the income uh, from members, um, let me just get back here. So it means it's the, I'm the one who was analyzing the, the wrong question. Um, so it means when you look on the income from members, income from members, we have entrance fees. So our entrance fees is how much? For seven seventy thousand. Let me limit this to thousands. So for seven seventy. Then the next one we have the member subscriptions. Those ones we get from members. The member subscriptions is how much? Uh fifteen nine hundred. The other one is the uh, the interest on less subscriptions. Interest or less subscriptions, how much do we have? 795. Then we have uh, the interest income, which is the fixed deposits. That one is not from us. Uh, royalties, those are the, from the third parties. Those are from the third parties. So how, what is the total of these? Because this is what we are getting from members. What is the total? 
So I just need to take my calculator for 770 plus 15,900 plus 795, getting 21, four, uh, 21, 465, 21, 465. That is the total income for members. Those are the total income for members. So to calculate your 75 percent test, so you need to take the the total income for members, which is 21,465. You divide by the total income. The total income as per the question is at 5,000 times 100 percent times 100 percent. How much it is? So divide by that 5,000. I'm getting around 61.3%, which is less than 75%, and therefore it should be subjected for taxation. So in this case, I'm just going to be taking the Michezo, Michezo Sports Club. Michezo Sports Club, we are doing for 2015. 2015 taxable income computation. So in that case, um, once you write your title like that, allow me just to uh, to put a Kenya shillings here, and then I, I reduce our shillings to thousands. So the first amount which I'm just supposed to be taking there, it will be the income from members. The income from members is how much? 21, 475, 465, sorry. 21,465. The rest, we have the operating expenses as per the additional information somewhere. What in note number two, you have been told there is an operating expenses. Um, <clears throat> so we less here. Operating expenses. Our operating expenses, we are given 63,60. Let us get the net, the net income from members. The net income from members are going to be taking 21,465 minus 6360, getting 15,105. 15,105. From there, now I can proceed by analyzing the other incomes given. Um, other incomes, we start with the interest income. You can see this is a company. So remember, uh, when you are analyzing the incomes, we say it's, uh, the income which is uh, coming from the body corporate to the uh, to the organizations, uh, which is coming from the financial institutions to the body corporates, the withholding tax at the rate 15% is not final. So <clears throat> when we start with the interest income, so um, how am I supposed to be treating it? The gross amount is added to other incomes tax accordingly, and that is what we are doing. 2544. 2544, that is the interest income. Um, we have dividend income, we don't know where they are coming. So you can do an assumption, you say they are qualifying, they are not subjected for further taxation, and you put dash because we don't know where they are coming from. Also, we have royalties. They are subjected for further taxation, right? So the total royalties of ours is how much? The royalties which we are provided with amounts to 1908. 1908. From the royalties, we have rent income. <clears throat> you can do your assumption. And you say it is residential. You put your dash there. You put your dash. So how much is the, I can see there is a gain on property transfers. Uh, that is a non-taxable income either. So even you are not supposed to be checking on it. Then from there, you can proceed by getting the, the total, uh, the taxable uh, income. Total taxable income. So how much is our total taxable income? I take 15,105. Uh, we add 25,44. 25,44. 25,44. 
we add 1908. We get 19, 557. 19, 557. Let us look on the tax liability. How much is our tax liability? We said we tax at the rate of 30%. It will be 30% of 19,557. How much it is? 58. Then we less with all the taxes, with all tax reliefs. And in this case, they start with the interest income. Uh, the rate of 15% of the gross amount, 15% of 2544. We are getting around 381.6. There is royalties. The rate for royalties is 5% of 1908. So 0 0.05 times 1908. We get 95.4. What is the tax payable? So 5867.1 minus 381.6 minus 95.4, getting around 5390.4. 5390.4. That is how you do. Uh, the questions are uh, from uh, uh, um, Sports Club. Is how you deal with them. Are we together to that point? Yes. Thank you. So let me look on the, the last one, uh, which I promised to deal with it today. <clears throat> that one is for SACOS. And uh, when you look on the taxation of SACOS, we are saying, um, let me just look for a better explanation there. I can be able to explain to you. So we, we understand that uh, the circles is just the collection of uh, members with the key objectives. And uh, as far we are saying that uh, um, notwithstanding any provision of the act, the total income for any year of income shall be the aggregate of <clears throat> one, the 50% of the gross income from the interests other than interest from its members. So in simple terms, this is what we are supposed to be saying regarding to rates, that uh, no operating income of a SACO, those are the income earned from members, is taxable. And then the operating expenses of a SACO are disallowable expense. So B, let me continue with this one. Uh, B, we are saying, is gross income from any right granted for the use or occupation of any property not being royalty ascertained in accordance with the provision of the Income Tax Act. C, we are discussing gains chargeable to tax under Section 3, Subsection 2. D, any other income including royalties chargeable to tax, right? Now, <clears throat> when you look on the, when you look on these questions, right, regarding to circles, I just want to do some questions which were brought here. And uh, once we do them, um, hopefully, uh, we are in a good position to understand how uh, the income from this circle should be done. I will just be able to go back first to 2016, uh, that the question which I was confusing with, I start with it. So let me just go back there. Mm -hmm. So there is a, this question of Jabore as Sarko Society Limited reported the following income and expenditure for the year ended that far December 2015. The incomes, we are being given the gross rental income, interest on savings account, interest on members' loans, interest on fixed deposit account, and we have interest on treasury bills. 
Then we list our expense there. We have repainting of rented property. We have interest on loan for money invested in treasury bills, administration expenses, and then we have the legal expense relating to the rented property. Additional information we have been told that the circle declared dividends and bonuses of 980,000 shillings. The corporation tax rate provided is 30% required. We have been told that the total taxable profit for the circle for the year ended at 1st December 2015. Then we have the tax payable by the circle for the year ended at 1st December 2015. 20 years, it should be 2015. So when you come across that question, one, you need to, know, to understand that uh, the expenses, the operating expenses are circle and disallowable together with the income for members. They are non-taxable. They are non-taxable. They are not subjected for any taxation. So the only tax that we're going to be doing should be the 50% of the gross amount. That is what we want just to do right now. Now, um, let me just go to my board so that I can teach you how to deal with circles. Right. So let me teach you how to deal with these circles. So in that case, um, we are doing the question for Jabore. It is in November 2016. Question number, it should be three, three B. So it, is, it should be November 2016. Question number three B. We are do, doing a question for Jabore. Three A. Is it three A or B? Three A. There should be A, thank you. 3F. So we are doing a question for Jabore, uh, Sako Society Limited. We are doing a question for 2015 taxable income computation. Right, 2015 uh, taxable. Once we write my ending like that, I start my question straight away <laughs> and by identifying the already given um, incomes. We start with the gross rental income. You know what it does best. I do an assumption this is the residential and becomes non taxable income. I put a dash there. The other one will be the interest of savings account. <clears throat> we take 50%. The interest on savings account. Interest on savings account. We take 50% of the gross amount. The gross amount provided is what? 60,000. Getting 80,000. We have interest on member loans. Interest on members loans. You put what? Just put that there. <clears throat> we also have um, interest on fixed deposit accounts. Interest on fixed deposit account, how much do we have? Um, we are being given 560. We just take 50%. Getting around 280,000. Getting to 80,000. The other one would be the interest on treasury bills. Interest on treasury bills, how much is this? We take 50%. 50% of how much? It should be 50% of 435,000. I think we should be getting to 217,500. Should be something closer to that. Do you have any other problem? We say no. Because the moment I put uh, the, the rental income here as a residential, it means then the the repainting of rented property becomes um, um it becomes um, uh, it, it does not add any value in, in your computation administrative the circle declared and so on. So allow me just to get uh, 
um, the taxable income here. Can I ask a question? Yes. On the interest on member loans, would you explain why we've not considered the 50% of the amount? We said no operating income of a circle. Those are the income earned from members is taxable. They are not subjected for any taxation. The reason is, there is an assumption that the money that we normally uh, we normally deposit to our accounts in circles, uh, they normally make an assumption that those money have already been earned from employment and have already been taxed. So you're not subjected for any taxation from such kind of income. That is why they don't tax, again, the income from members. Okay, you thank you. Yes. Very good. So how much it is? 360 plus that one, we get how much? It should be around 577,500. 577,500. So let us calculate the tax liability. So the tax liability we have, um, we discussed about 30%. Unless otherwise stated, 577,500, how much it is? So 577,500 times 0 0.3, we are getting 173, 250. Then we left the withholding tax reliefs. The withholding tax reliefs, one, we start with the interest on savings. Interest on savings accounts, we have 15% of 80,000. 15% 15 of 80,000 is how much? A quarter, it should be around 20. Ah, yeah. We have uh, interest on fixed. The interest on fixed deposits, which is 15%. Uh, the interest on fixed deposits, 280. This should be how much? This is 70,000. Oh, yeah. We also 15, have interest on treasury. 15% of 80,000 is not 20,000. Is how much? 12. 12,000. Yes, and yeah. I think also for, yes, and also for 280 is 42,000. 15% of 80 is not 20. No. Well, okay. Ah, yeah. I was doing different math. So, sorry. So the other one will be 15%, 15% 15 of 217 point 5. 217.5. We're getting that 2,625. How much is the tax payable here? How much is the tax payable? 173 to 50 plus minus 12. Minus 42, minus 32, 625. I think we are getting 86,625. 86,625. 625. <clears throat> there is a question they brought regarding the same December 2021. December 2021, question 2A. We can go there. Question 2A. December 2021, question 2A.
question two a question two a <clears throat> somewhat read the question from sunny Somewhat read kindly kevin The free information relates to Nsani Circle Limited for the year ended at 1st December 2020. Income statement for the year ended at 1st December 2020 is as follows. We have income, interest from members, interest from treasury bills, interest from government infrastructure funds, interest from ABA Bank, rental income, dividend from Masao Circle, dividend from Sopa Cooperative Limited gross income, you have expenditure, office expenses, general expenses, credit, loss, repair of rental property, net profit, additional information. Number one, office expenses include, scroll down. Office, office expenses include salaries to SACO employees, salary to the caretaker of the rental property, Purchase of office computers. Number two, general expenses include the possession of 484,000 and non performing loans to members of 620,000, which were written off. Number three, corporate tax rate during the year was 25%. Required, adjusted taxable profit or loss for the year ended that 1st December 2020. From and two tax liability for the year ended December 2020. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> I can see that uh, already examiners given you an hint. We cannot be able to do our question as how we have done our previous question. So we have been told to come up with adjusted taxable profit or loss uh, for uh, uh, that certain year. And we are going to be starting with our reported profits um, because the net profit provided is 19,140. So I don't want you to have a question why we are starting this question differently from the one that we have done. Now, in that case, let me just write my title. We are writing Zanisa for Limited. Uh, 2020 adjusted. Taxable income competition. So I will have two columns here, Kenya shillings. Maybe we have another one here, Kenya shillings there. Now, <clears throat> after you write that, let us start with our reported profits. Our important profit we are given as follows, 19,140. Then we add disallowable, disallowable expenses. So our disallowable expense, we have what? Let's go to information provided. So let me start with the office expenses. Remember we say all the operating expense of a circle are disallowable expense. But let me look on the one which is a, <clears throat> which is a disall which is allowable. For example, the office expense includes salaries to circle, disallowable, salaries to caretaker. So we are going to be looking up there if we have rental, uh, rental income. So in this case, allow me to take the office expense up there, which is 5,600. Minus that 200 relating to rents, we shall be able to factor it later. So this will be 5400 that is back. Number two, we have been told the general expense include depreciation. You know very well that uh, we have been told about the aspect of depreciation of 484 um, <clears throat> and then performing loans to members of 620,000. So I just go up there and I pick the total amount for general expenses without splitting it. 
general expenses. We have been told they are mounting to 1400. Because of the, uh, that uh, information relating to addition number two, they are all disallowable expenses. When I look on something else, we have um, <clears throat> bad debts. Bad debts. We have our bad debts amounted to 60. I think it should be 60. <laughs> the one relating to rent was channel 9. <clears throat> So how much is this? I think it should be 40, yeah? It should be 68, 60. It should be 68, 60. Then we are going to be deducting. <laughs> Normally deduct allowable expenses. Stop non-taxable. Stop non-taxable incomes. And uh, we are going to be starting with the incomes given up there. One, we know very well the interest for members are not subjected to they are not they are not subjected to tax. Mm -hmm. We are discussing about the interest for members loan. The interest for members loans amount to sixteen two hundred. The other one would be we have interest from treasury bills. That one you know very well. We take 50%. 50% of that gross is how much? That 200. This is around 1600. Ah, yeah. The next one is the interest from government infrastructure bonds. So interest from government, 50% of the gross amount given as 1,800. Get to 900 there. Yeah? The next one we have interest from other bank. Why are we subtracting 50%? The 50% we are subtracting because when you look on the computation of the incomes, one year a hundred percent, whereas they are supposed to be taking fifty, and then um, uh, uh, they are supposed to be taking only fifty percent, but they took a hundred percent. That is why we are deducting, leaving the other fifty. I think you are able to understand up to that point. So the interest from upper bank we have fifty percent. So that's easy to not only fifty percent in your poor for easy amount. After eighteen hundred, we have fifteen hundred. So 50 of these, I think it should be 750. Ah, yeah. The next one we have, um, uh, we have, um, <clears throat> we have rental income. We have rental income. So the rental income we have, um, let me, let me treat it as a commercial. If I treat it as a commercial, I just need to take um, um, the rent income there, which is supposed to be other incomes, but I'm supposed to be picking. What I'd be able to pick is uh, the amount which is at 200. That is 200 is subtract what? Mm -hmm. I think there is a, a, an expense related to it, amounted to 1300. Then I remember there was another one uh, regarding to salary to caretaker of rental property of 200. So what is the net for the rental income? How much it is? For the rental income, it will be that 200 minus 13 minus 200. Yeah? Getting around 1700. When you look on our north there, we say <clears throat> um, we said 50% of the gross income from the interest other than the interest from its members. Um, any other income excluding royalties chargeable to the tax. So I will be able to take the whole amount, 1700 here. Then on we have, um, let me go back to the question. We have dividend from Ma Mazao Sako. 
dividend from Mazao Sacco. So the dividend from Mazao, the 50% is based on the interest. The dividend, I take the whole amount. So how much for the dividend from Mazao? 1,000. Then we have the last one, where we have the dividend from SOFA. We are calling them dividends from SOFA. The dividend from SOFA, they are amounted to how much? 600 shillings. 600 shillings. So how much is this? How much is that amount? <clears throat> how much is this? We have 16,200. Plus 16,200. Uh, 1,600. What am I doing? 16,200 plus 1,600. Plus 900. Plus 750. Plus 1,700. Plus 1,600. I think I'm getting around 22,750. Oh, sorry. So I'm getting 22. 750. 22,750, right? So how much it is? So it will be 19,140 plus 6860. We are getting around 3250. Talking about adjusted taxable income. Yes. Continue. Hello. I'm asking you. Hmm? Why are you getting that in hundred for land income? When we look on the expenses as given in the question, we have repairs of the rented property. Hello. Have you seen? Hello. I don't know where that guy is able to hear me. Can you be able to hear me? Yes, Malim, I'm, I'm hearing, but uh, I have a problem with my network. So I have said... Yes? I have said that uh, when you look at um, the expense provided in the income statement, there is uh, 1300 for the rented property. Have you seen it? Hello? Are we together at that point? Yeah, I've gone away. Now from there, I just want to leave it at that point so that you can go and be able to calculate the tax liability. Because already the tax liability, you are going to just be taking the adjustable tax income. Then you conclude by taking the interest which are here, which are subjecting you to, um, to a withholding tax. You are subjecting us to a withholding tax. I can see we have the interest from the T-bills, 15% of 1,600. The interest from government bills, 15% of 900. The interest from ABBA Bank, which is subjecting you to um, um, to something there, we got into, uh, we have also the dividends, uh, the dividends from um, 
from uh, sorry, we have the dividend from um, so far. So when you go to the other income, by the way, I think here we are supposed to be getting the adjusted business income. Be the business income here. Yeah? And when you go to other incomes, yeah. You go to other incomes. I have uh, rental income. Our rental income, we have 1700. We also have uh, dividends uh, from SOPA. Right, the dividend from SOPA Corp of 600. Then we have dividend from Mazao Sako. Um, they are coming from Mazao. Uh, from a certain circle to a circle, the withholding tax should be final. So once you had this one, you're supposed to be getting the total taxable income. So from there, I think I'm just supposed to be adding 23 here. 23, I'm supposed to be getting 55.50. So the tax they are on, will be, I don't know whether the question is at the rate of 25%, let me see. Yes, the corporation tax rate, 25% of 550, you're going to be getting there. Then you less the withholding tax, reliefs. So I said, we take 15% of the interest from T-bills, The interest from T-bills, 15% of the gross amount. Ah, yeah. We have interest from government, which will be 15% of the 900. We have from ABBA Bank, 15%, should be 15% of 750, correct. Uh, we have, uh, we have our, what? our rental income, and have our rental income of 10% of 1700. We have for SOFA dividends 15% of 600. That is what you are supposed to be doing. Then you determine the tax payable. You determine your tax payable. Once you do that, the question is already done. Is already done. So I just request to stop at that point. Stop at that point. But when you are going to be meeting again now, because I'm working on concluding, we are supposed to be looking on the taxation of extraction companies. We are supposed to construction companies and petroleum companies to we shall be able to do taxation, taxation of uh, construction companies, taxation of uh, construction companies. I think also is one of uh, one of uh, key which is missing. Um, as I move on, uh, concluding, uh, if I will be able to get time, I'll be able to do. Um, taxation of leases. We are going to be looking on the leases, by the way. The leases, or now they are normally taxed, and the, the questions there is a question somewhere for leases. Taxation of leasing entities. We'll be able to engage on them on that on that Sunday, so that I will just be able remaining with two things: taxation of circles, sorry, taxation of banks, and taxation. Taxation of banks, and also we have another taxation there. Taxation of insurance and assurance companies. I think in the next two weeks, I should be over with the syllabus. The next two, two weeks. The next two weeks. Can you go, Kevin?